Over the last few months, there have been some serious allegations against the popular YouTuber Dream, claiming that he tampered with random loot drops in his Minecraft speedruns. So the Minecraft speedrun moderation team, in a combined effort with mathematical experts in our community, have launched an investigation, which is culminating in the release of this video and a statistical analysis paper that thoroughly examines the case and accounts for bias. That paper can be found in the description. This video, however, is meant to make that information more accessible to a wider audience, debunk any misinformation, and present circumstantial evidence that isn't proper to fit in our paper's objective analysis. All that being said, please watch through to the end to hear the entirety of our argument. On October 16th, speedrunner Minecraftvenger posted data he collected from six consecutive live streams of 1.16 random seed glitchless speedruns by Dream from earlier that month. The data he collected was reviewed by several members of the mod team, and it showed that random piglin barters performed throughout these streams yielded significantly higher ender pearl drop rates, Dream getting an astounding 42 successful trades out of 262 possible trades. These results are exceptional, as they are not only substantially greater than their expected values, but perhaps more notably, substantially greater than the rates from other top-level runners. But just how rare are Dream's trades? To answer this, we first need to look at some basic statistics, specifically at these models called binomial distributions. The goal of a binomial distribution is to show how likely a random event happens if that event only happens a certain percentage of the time. To get a better understanding of these distributions, let's take a look at a classic example, flipping a coin, to see how it works. It's common knowledge that when you flip a coin, it's a 50-50 chance it either lands on heads or tails. But obviously, if you go to flip a coin right now, it's pretty likely that you'll get something like three heads in a row, or at the very least, something that doesn't fit the 50-50 ratio immediately. Taking this to the extreme, getting something like 37 heads in a row would be pretty rare while getting something like 17 heads mixed with 20 tails seems about average. What binomial distributions do is quantify just how lucky any one of these scenarios is. Let's take the case where you flip 10 coins and want to see how likely getting any particular number of heads is. Here you can see for each number of heads there's a certain height, which represents the probability that after 10 flips, that's the number of heads there are. So for 6 heads in 10 flips, this is the chance of it happening. But say if you want to look at the chance of getting 6 heads or better, you can add all of these probabilities to get the combined chance. Binomial distributions don't only work for coins though. In fact, every event that either happens or doesn't because of some probability can be modeled through binomial distributions. This is great since we want to understand the odds of getting repeated pearl trades from picklins. The major difference between pearls and coin flips is that pearl trades only have a 4.7 chance of happening which shifts the distribution to the left considerably and makes the slope a lot steeper. All right, hopefully I didn't lose you too much in the math, but now we have the proper skills to understand speedrunners' odds of getting pearl trades over time. But before we get to Dream, let's take a look at another top runner. In fact, he's the luckiest runner we could find, Illumina. Over the course of five streams in September and early October, Illumina was able to trade 323 gold with piglins in his RSG attempts. From that 323 gold, he got 20 pearl trades, Let's model this with our binomial distribution to see just how lucky Illumina got. Plugging Illumina's trading results into the formula, we get an approximate value of 0.09. This means that there is only a 9% chance of getting 20 or more pearl trades with 323 gold, placing Illumina above 91% of other runners. This is really lucky, but Illumina most certainly did not cheat to get these odds. These kinds of numbers are expected when you think of the total number of runners doing attempts. For instance, say about 1,000. Since 1 in 11 of those runners will get comparable luck, about 90 other people did just as well or better than Illumina. Did Illumina get pretty lucky? Yes. Although any statistician will tell you that 0.09 is just a small statistical deviation. But that's just for 20 and 323. Let's take a look at Dream's odds. This isn't exactly a good look. Across 6 streams, Dream bartered 262 times and got 42 pearl trades which when plugged into the formula comes in at 1 in 177 billion. 
It might be a bit difficult to visualize just how unlikely these odds are, so we thought it would be useful to put Dream's rates in context with other speedrunners. So members of our community watched through hours of runs to gather data the exact same way Dream's was collected, and we created this graph which shows barters against pearl trades. Dream is just miles above anything remotely comparable or even reasonable, assuming his rates are the vanilla values. This information has been public to an extent for over a month now, and Dream has released a document trying to refute the idea that he cheated. The main thing he's saying is that the data collected was biased in some way, so the extremely high figures in the billions aren't correct. So let's take a look at some of these supposed biases. The first major argument that Dream has pushed is that the data is biased because of a stopping rule. He's saying that since he stopped streaming runs because he got a personal best time, that was good because he was lucky, that last data point will be skewed upwards. This isn't the entirety of how stopping rules work, but it is just what Dream mentioned. This is a quite valid concern. And the way to correct for it is actually pretty complex, and we go into it in the paper. Correcting for this bias, the numbers go from 1 in 170 billion to the low low number of 1 in 82 billion. Another point that Dream has pushed is that the data was cherry picked with some selection bias across its 24 hours of footage, or was selected across runners because of having more noticeable RNG. The argument essentially boiled down to, they noticed that my luck was really high, so when they investigated it and found out it was really high, it doesn't count because it was biased. You can check the paper for a rebuttal, but we effectively examined the probability of this happening even if we checked multiple runners or streams first, and the bias wasn't nearly strong enough to refute the idea that the odds were possibly tampered with. Look, we're the first to admit that the data is actually biased, but it's nowhere near as biased as it would have to be to disqualify the evidence. The thing with real-world data is that it's pretty much always going to be biased in some way, but the field of statistics was made to interpret this stuff nonetheless, and account for all the errors. In our case, we've overcorrected the bias far enough so that we're biasing in favor of Dream, and we're still getting pretty crazy numbers. And we haven't even gotten to the strongest evidence so far. Guess what else has a random drop chance in speedruns? Blaze rods. Anyone want to guess what Dream's blaze luck was? 1 in 113 billion. Again, we go into this in much more detail in the paper, and we don't have much time to talk about it here. But the blazes pretty much follow the same logic as the pearls. Here's a graph showing the other runners, and it's pretty obvious they haven't learned how to get Dream luck yet. Now, this really isn't looking too good for Dream. Biasing in favor of him, giving very favorable circumstances, and assuming the best, the odds for all this happening is still around 1 in 678 trillion. Well, that is before we account for p-hacking, basically saying, let's be generous and say there are 90 ways to investigate two types of RNG. If someone malicious was looking to cherry pick data, then they would just choose the most unlikely one out of the 90. So, since we'd want to correct for this potential bias, we divide 678 trillion by 90 and get a value of 1 in 7 trillion, which as you may notice is still a ridiculously large number. At this point, I think that Dream would probably want us to account for a second talking point. The game is glitched. The game is glitched, or Java's weird argument, is something that Dream wrote about in his response, and he claims that Java randomness could just be biased in some way. Dream, despite being a coder, doesn't exactly know what he's talking about here. On our team are some really experienced experts on Java randomness, especially applied to Minecraft, and they have all found that there's no way that Java could have just accidentally done any of this. The way Java works is that any time a random action occurs, it scrambles some numbers internally, so the next random result will look different. The thing with Minecraft is that there are only a few different random generators that account for all the random outcomes, so each action is pretty contingent on the entire environment. I'm sure a question that some people might be asking is that if the per luck and the blaze luck was high, couldn't that mean that both used the same faulty random generator? The problem here is that bartering and blazes actually use distinct generators. Blazes use the entity random, while barters use the world random, which means they are completely separate and have no way of interacting. Let's take a closer look at pearl trades for example though. While bartering, the player is in the nether. What else is in the nether? Lava. Lava also happens to use the world generator just like the pearls, and there are thousands upon thousands of lava blocks constantly shifting the random generator all over the place, which makes it an extremely entropic environment. Since there is this entropy background radiation, in the time between pearl trades, the RNG is completely scrambled, and the amount of scrambling is random itself, which makes it impossible to have any continued interplay between strings of barters. Additionally, there are just some mathematical reasons that mean pearl drops can't influence one another, so there's really no way these numbers could just be the code's fault. This begs the question, since it looks like Dream might have cheated, how could he do it? Considering he was streaming at the time, left a lot of people with the idea that there was no way he could have faked a run. 
This probably stems from the idea that most faked runs in the past were done via splicing, which is pretty difficult to do when you're live streaming and interacting with chat. But the most likely scenario is that Dream used some mod or data pack behind the scenes in such a way that would be undetectable to a naive viewer. This becomes a bit more suspicious when you consider that Dream was using Fabric, which is a mod loader that a lot of the community uses for performance increases. From Dream's log files, we can see that he had enabled Sodium, a perfectly legal FPS boost mod like Optifine, and the Fabric API, a mod creation tool. Dream denies that he has any knowledge of how to create mods or do modification with Fabric. We asked Dream for his mods folder specifically so we could check for any modification, but he was unable to provide any evidence since he says he deletes the contents of his mods folder pretty regularly. In Dream's statement, he's acknowledged this and said there is no way to 100% disprove that he didn't cheat by modifying files. Still, there are many people out there who are probably wondering, why would Dream cheat? Personally, I have no clue, it seems like a pretty stupid thing to do, but we can speculate and look at previous cheaters for information. By the way, this section is not supposed to be a part of the objective analysis, and has no influence on the mod team's decision, but considering how Dream Twitter reacted when the news first broke, combined with Dream heavily focusing on this point himself, we thought it would be worse not to address it. Dream is on the record for hating 1.16 speedruns considering the enormous amount of luck involved. In the past, he had gotten frustrated with just how lucky the standards for world records had gotten, openly contesting the validity of Corbanus' world record, which was verified as the first sub-15 minute time. Before coming back to live streaming speedruns, Dream stated that he would stop running 1.16 and focus on 1.15 if he came back at all. And honestly, I agree with him, the RNG is pretty ridiculous for these categories. But just keep this anti-RNG sentiment in mind though, as we take a look at the precedent in other games. Carl Jobs is a speedrunning documentarian, and he's a lot of experience covering illegitimate speedruns and their perpetrators. Here's an excerpt from a Carl video that I thought summed up the historical context really well. It may seem counterintuitive, but you'd be surprised at how often some of the best players inevitably try to fake runs. You might think that having the talent to achieve a world record would make somebody less susceptible to cheating, but it often works against them. Having talent tends to make people feel entitled, and when the game they play doesn't give them the luck they need, they become increasingly frustrated. On top of this, having talent and deep knowledge of a game makes you a better cheater. The fact that better players make better cheaters means that arguments such as, he's such a good player, he has no reason to cheat, are fundamentally flawed. When Billy Mitchell and Todd Rogers were exposed as frauds, this was one of the most common arguments their defenders tried to make. If anything, having a better understanding of a game makes you more likely to cheat. This is why, at the top level, proof standards are so important. I know the idea of dream cheating can be unsettling to as many fans out there. I mean, I like the guy too. At the very least, maybe this does pose a plausible motive. Even if Dream wasn't looking for any placement results, getting good RNG is just way more fun and entertaining to watch. You can't really fault the guy for wanting a more enjoyable casual experience. The only problem is if he was passing it off as an officially legitimate speedrun. Again, our collective decision as moderators is just based on the objective math, not the theories or feelings around it. But by every metric we've tried, it seems that Dream's odds are just unexplainable. In closing, I want to address one important point raised by Dream. As Dream likes to point out, just because the odds of his luck happening are in the trillions, it doesn't mean that's the same chance of him cheating. I mean, with Illumina's considerably lucky 92% odds, it doesn't mean that there was a 92% chance of him cheating. But the thing that Dream misses is that the odds for the event and the odds for cheating are still correlated. If you perform an infinitesimally unlikely event, then you can be extremely confident that something went wrong that allowed it to happen. Just because something is possible doesn't mean that it's at all feasible. Here the numbers are just so large that they outweigh any conceivable subjective opinion. I'm sure that lots of Dream fans out there will naturally defend Dream, despite the evidence. After all, the more confident you are that Dream wouldn't cheat, the less this evidence should convince you. But you would need to be almost impossibly certain that Dream wouldn't cheat in order for this not to be convincing evidence. Even giving Dream the benefit of the doubt as much as possible, as moderators, there's no real option other than to deem these runs as illegitimate.